so functions of stores right stores and its importance unit 9 so in introduction it says that store is a place where excess material is kept which will be used as and when required loss of items deterioration obsolescence and inadequacy of what is stored to what is needed are treated as part of life now okay. what exactly is a store a store is a place okay a store is a place where you keep your inventories mm -hmm. or a finished good which you can mm -hmm. use in time and it okay. could be used in a day to day activity you will mm -hmm. have a store in your house like a store room you will have a store out outlet on in any of the places uh, where you can ha go and buy groceries and uh, other materials you will have a store in uh, your manufacturing plant you will have a store in your it organization where different types of commodities would be placed and as and when needed it would be taken from that particular place correct yes so basically a store is something up it's a place to keep or all, all the types of inventories or finished good or basically material mm -hmm. it can also keep uh, machines also like if a machine mm -hmm. not which is not on the shop floor those type of machines can also be kept for a storage purpose or mm -hmm. if you exaggerate the store it becomes like a warehouse correct yes now this is a problem in in a store the problem what they are trying to showcase here is we will be having materials okay mm -hmm. material could be a raw material for a manufacturing industry could be in the form of a chemical could be in the form of uh, mm -hmm. your iron could be in the form of a cement mm -hmm. for agriculture industry it could be the perishable and the non perishable foods for uh, mm -hmm. automobile industry it will be the electronic gadgets for a uh, mm -hmm. petroleum industry it will be the crude oil so mm -hmm. there is a high risk of theft of pilferages involved mm -hmm. inside a store mm -hmm. so that is one of the risk in a store Mm -hmm. coming to another slide number 3 mm -hmm. in the chara indian customers and suppliers stores have chara indian customers as a matter of fact all functions of management are in general customers to stores correct customers yeah means what so what exactly it means is uh, if you think about a manufacturing industry right mm -hmm. a store will be a place where all material will be kept okay, okay, okay. now if yeah. there is a need of a material in the production shop floor then that production mm -hmm. shop floor is a customer to that store yes sir. right if you take an example of your uh, it industry you will be having all this uh, uh, facility management services <coughs> like uh, tea mm -hmm. bags tea coffee sugar milk so they will have a central place from there whenever there is a need they will bring that much quantity of milk tea and everything and put it in your pantry which gets consumed okay so again this becomes a internal customer to your store correct correct mm -hmm. on the other hand if you think about like a store like a big bazaar or uh, reliance though this store mm -hmm. they have an external customer also okay okay so customers mm -hmm. are usually expect usually uh, customers as usual expect quality cost mm -hmm. and delivery from every supplier mm -hmm. okay stores also have to deliver these customer expectations mm -hmm. in the process of discharging this obligation mm -hmm. store performs some activities that are function of stores mm -hmm. okay okay yes. so what are the functions of a store Okay. In a store, what happened? It's basically a transition place, correct? Mm -hmm. So you will you you will use that place to push into your material and then to move out the material. Okay. A material or a product will store will be stored there for a certain.
certain amount of time frame okay okay so the first function is that you will have a incoming process your material okay. would be incoming right okay. so if you take a case of a reliance fresh in the morning okay. you will have like arrival of uh, 100 kgs of potatoes some uh, 500 uh, packets of chips then you are having okay. around 10 bottles of cold drink those those okay. many packets of oil spices and everything so that is an incoming process Mm-hmm. so for a incoming process in store mm-hmm. you will have a received process means you are mm-hmm. receiving those things okay okay so once in inside a store mm-hmm. also you will have a central place where you will put everything you will check that whatever you have placed the order uh, has arrived at your place or not correct mm-hmm. so that is the receive first thing received after received you are going to store them Okay. Okay. So you will have a small place where you are storing it. Mm-hmm. Now, as and when there is a need, you will bring them on the shelves. Okay. Right. If I am taking example about a retail store, then, or in a FMCG sector, you will have a central place where all your uh, uh, materials, finished goods, uh, would be present. From there, when there is a need, you will bring small quantity and put it on the shelf. Okay. Correct. So that is the okay. retrieval thing. Mm-hmm. Also, you have like you need to issue it and records. Okay. I- issue means that when you are you you bringing it from the central place of that store and when w- at which particular time you are going to bring. When there mm-hmm. is a need, correct? Yes. So when there is a need or when you see that the shelf is going to get empty, that point mm-hmm. of time you will issue a request to your central s- place inside within the store. to get mm-hmm. so much quantity and put it on s- this particular shelf okay now record you need to keep track everything so record is one of the important thing housekeeping issue no issue means uh, we are issuing to different uh, shop floors or where the correct correct yes 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 so okay. issue means that when a uh, a uh, shop floor person comes to the material department and says that hey i need so and so chemical in this many quantity then that point of time the store will issue that much of uh, quantity of that particular chemical or that particular material mm. okay mm. and now everything is recorded correct mm. housekeeping is very necessary here to maintain uh, the place clean to maintain a proper operation to maintain the proper visibility of the product and everything mm-hmm. and you need to have a control on all the different functions or activities of the store okay in certain cases what happens is that you have ordered uh, inventories if you take mm-hmm. a case of a retail store you have ordered certain number of inventory but mm-hmm. whatever you have ordered either has arrived in a surplus quantity or whatever you have ordered is not getting sold off and that point of time the quantity has uh, gets arised okay okay now if it is being a perishable items you may need to take care about that extra quantity else what will happen is you will be having a high chance of theft or mm-hmm. you will have a high chance of wastages mm-hmm. or it will get rotten so you need to take care about that surplus inventory so you need to have a surplus management okay and then you need to verify verification is one of the most important thing what happen is that from the warehouse when you are saying that okay i am going to send 10 packets of so and so material okay? okay but when it arrives to your store from that truck sy- transport system you find it out that only 9 packet has arrived okay so where one packet has gone that packet okay. is having a cost because you have paid the money to your warehouse for that packet correct so yeah. that packet has got stolen so how you are going to find it out you need mm-hmm. to do verification so that is at one time on a regular mm-hmm. day basis like in every week basis or at a month level you need to do a verification if you okay. take a case of a library they do a verification mm-hmm. of entire books every year to find it out whether whatever the books they have issued or what if the books they are having mm-hmm. those information are up to date in the system mm-hmm. 
and then interaction and coordination obviously you are having lot of things here involved from your incoming information to outgoing to management to proper operations so you need to have a proper interaction and coordination within the system okay yeah now they are uh, talking this thing in detail so what is the receipt any item of goods or material that enters the organization always enter through the stores okay okay right. if you take the case of a uh, manufacturing industry or any industry big industry so whenever a material is arrived so your mrp will say that i need so and so material in this particular week now when the material okay. is arrived it will not directly go to the shop floor okay it will go to the material section or to the material department or material store where okay. a material store person will inspect okay. whatever the material which has arrived is having the proper quality or not uh. and or it will they will also verify that the proper number mrp mm. if it has ordered uh, 10 units of a uh, wheel mm. 10 units of wheels to their own supplier and the supplier has uh, sent them only 9 unit of wheel then okay. it is the responsibility of the store person to verify that and raise the warning okay okay so similarly every item unless specified excluded has to leave through the store okay, okay. now what happen is that when your mat material has arrived you are going to give it to the shop floor so that material will move out only from store mm -hmm. okay so material sent by any supplier after the security clearances come to the store Mm -hmm. security check the document carried by the carrier known as delivery chalan against the copy of the purchase order placed on the supplier by the organization now mm -hmm. what happens is that the buyer he will raise a purchase order or an mm -hmm. invoice okay that purchase mm -hmm. order will tell that i need so and so number of so and so quantity in this particular week okay so one copy of that purchase order will be withheld with the organization and one copy will be sent to the supplier mm -hmm. on basis of that the supplier will prepare a delivery chalan and delivery on basis of that purchase order mm -hmm. a supplier will prepare a delivery plan sorry delivery chalan okay. the delivery chalan will have the information about the supplier okay it will have the information about the quantity about the quality and different types of taxes which is which will be levied on the road tax so you have a vat tax you have uh, soon you will have a gst goods and service tax mm -hmm. you will ha have a entry tax exit tax and all those things so suppose if i am going to send something from gujarat to kerala mm -hmm. the material will followed from gujarat to madhya pradesh to chatisgarh to maharashtra then to andhra pradesh and then to kerala so at mm -hmm. every entry and exit of that particular mm -hmm. state the company mm -hmm. need to pay tax okay? okay that is called a exercise duty okay. that exercise duty okay. so all this information should be present in a delivery chalan this chalan would be accompanied by the driver of the truck or the transport company okay so whenever your uh, vigilance department does a scrutiny or ask the driver to stop he need to show this delivery chalan okay, okay. it's only not only on the roadway if you think about you are uh, sending something from uh, mangalore port to your rotterdam port so it will follow the different sea routes so sea routes mm -hmm. whichever is like uh, apart from your uh, normal free water any route which is near to the vicinity of a country you need to pay tax to that country okay so all this information would be present in delivery chalan okay. also there are two more concept that is called a bill to address and a ship to address okay B bill to yeah bill to b i w l bill to address and ship to address 
Mm-hmm. Now, what is a bill to address? Mm-hmm. Suppose your headquarter is in N- MG Road, okay, for your mm-hmm. big bazaar, but you want a delivery in Kormangla, mm-hmm. okay? So you be you are placing an order from your mm-hmm. MG Road office, okay? But you want a delivery in Kormangla, mm-hmm. correct? Or mm-hmm. you are placing an order. from an uh, mg road and you want a delivery in chennai mm-hmm. so your bill to address will be your mg road where from where you are going to get the money from where you have received the order correct mm-hmm. and your ship to address will be where you are going to deliver the material or the product mm-hmm. okay so all this information would be present in the delivery chalan mm-hmm. now what happens is when the t- material arrives in within the campus of the uni, uh, factory the mm-hmm. delivery ch- the delivery chalan will be matched against the purchase order okay and that point of time they will do the verification that whether whatever the quantity they have ordered they are getting that those many quantity mm-hmm. or not mm-hmm. got it so that is mm-hmm. the another uh, function c- uh, of store okay next is mm-hmm. storage mm-hmm. so what is storage is that once the unloaded material is approved by the quality control department as per the quality plan in the quality system it is moved mm-hmm. to a specific place in the store's layout okay okay so now you have received the material correct what mm-hmm. you, you what you have to do is you need to inspect them Mm-hmm. you need to find it out that whatever the material you have ordered suffices the quality or the standard what you have requested to the your supplier mm-hmm. okay so you will verify everything that this material mm-hmm. is having the so quantity you will do some type of quality test there and mm-hmm. once you have satisfied that all the material possesses the standard and within mm-hmm. the tolerance limit whatever you have ordered then you will bring mm-hmm. those material inside your storage a store and that is what is mm-hmm. called storage mm-hmm. the material is so stored that it becomes easy to retrieve and s- issue subsequently mm-hmm. now within a storage you will have a big house right mm-hmm. if you have like some place at some place you have iron rods another place you have wheels another place you have pcb gadgets so it becomes mm-hmm. very much confusing correct if you need an order so you should mm-hmm. have a proper way or you should have a proper layout of your store mm-hmm. that okay all my iron rods will go at one place all mm-hmm. my electronic go- gadgets will go to another place all my mm-hmm. wheels will go to another place so the retrieval process becomes easy and that will save time Okay. So if you think about the lean methodology you need to eliminate the waste waste mm-hmm. elimination could be in terms of time also so mm-hmm. what happen is that y- we know that a store uh, for a store mm-hmm. your shop floor will be a customer so a store mm-hmm. need to satisfy the demand of a customer as soon as possible mm-hmm. correct so if you see a pharmacist if you see a, a medical shop they have all mm-hmm. types of medicines and they have kept mm-hmm. each categorized medicines into different types like tablets capsules syrups uh, and different things mm-hmm. and things which are necessary for like fever uh, or uh, cold and cough at one place for uh, skin disease you will have medicine in another place so they have a plan so the mm-hmm. retrieving those medicine and giving it is very fast okay okay so now one most important thing is that let you you should also concentrate about the damage and pilferages which may happen for the material mm-hmm. now let's say that you you are work, you have a uh, automobile industry and you are working mm-hmm. on pcb you have pcbs you know pcb right printed chur- uh, uh, circuit board mm-hmm. so you will have all types of uh, uh, transistors and everything there if those things what will happen is if some transistor someone puts in their pocket and move out from the factory 
and if there is no way to identify that then it becomes a theft and it's a loss to the co company okay so what you need to do is you need to have a proper way of security security mm -hmm. for your materials okay not only in the terms of your like your cctv security if you have a perishable items like onion okay. wheat or any vegetable groceries if you do not mm -hmm. concentrate or if you do not provide any good uh, storage cap storage uh, pu purpose sorry not storage to those uh, items then you will have a loss because what will happen is if wheat is put in outside the in the air and if rain is there everything will get spoiled rats mm -hmm. will come and uh, uh, it will be uh, eaten up by them it will get rotten up so you are losing mm -hmm. out the your material mm -hmm. if you consider a company like itc which manufactures a biscuit and they need mm -hmm. a wheat flour so they have purchased huge tons of wheat now if they just leave the wheat after the inspection mm -hmm. with, uh, in a open manner you will have a high chance of pilferage someone will come and take 500 grams in their pocket or in their bag and move out or rats mm -hmm. will come and eat or uh, you will have rain it will get spoiled the quality of those product will deteriorate and at one point of time you will find that they are not suitable for the manufacturing Mm -hmm. so you need to concentrate on security as well okay now next is retrieval 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 is what like easy and quick retrievability of items that are demanded by the internal customers easy identification maximum space utilization minimum handling are the key factors to retrieval functions it is common knowledge in many of the companies that after hours of searching for the item is declared to be out of stock this causes hold up of production process and avoidable urgent purchase of out of stock this function takes place as per established retrieval system right. now sometimes what happen is that you may think that i have kept some document at a very nice place at a very secure place but you have forgotten that where you have kept that document Okay. okay let's okay. say that you have bought something um uh, uh, some biscuit and you have placed it in some place but now you have forgotten where is that biscuit so what do you need to do you need to buy another biscuit yeah. right same thing yeah. is applicable in any industry if you have bought a material but you have not able to retrieve the material from the store if that material mm -hmm. is lying within another or uh, beneath the another material and you're not able to locate that material so you will say that material is out of stock correct mm -hmm. and then you mm -hmm. will place an order to your purchasing department and purchasing department there will be huge hue and cry production floor people will say no i need the material else we are going to get delayed in order then sales and marketing people will come and say that no no you cannot do and the then the customer will not be happy with that you they will lose their margin their profit and then purchase department will say okay we don't have any other option and we need to place an order so that point of time uh, you don't know whether you will have get the particular material or not so you, because of the lead time and all those things so you may order at a high price mm -hmm. so if your storage is not able to retrieve the material if your storage is not properly designed then it is a problem Okay. Issue. Fulfilling customer demand for the item in minimum time, keeping quality high and cost minimum is issue. An internal customer does not pay the price, but he has to fulfill requirements of authorization for the demand. A duly authorized indent or requisition for the item is the key. Now, let's say that from a shop floor there is an order. Okay. of 10 gauge thick steel stainless steel sheet okay mm -hmm. so that uh, the shop floor person will make a requisition that requisition will go to storage department mm -hmm. and within the company if it is an internal customer then shop then uh, st oh, this okay now is it fine okay i'm saying like within a company 
when a production department has placed an order to a material department for getting material okay mm -hmm. let's say they need 10 mm gauge uh, thick uh, stainless steel sheet mm -hmm. okay so they will r raise a requisition for that to the store department mm -hmm. and then store department will find it out and will see whether they have the material or not they will check their safety stock if material is mm -hmm. not there and from there mm -hmm. they will satisfy the shop floor person mm -hmm. but in this they need to keep track of all the records mm -hmm. okay so this is like a internal customer but if you think mm -hmm. as a FMCG retail shop there they have a external customer so payment also should be considered in that when they are issuing the materials mm -hmm. So, next is records. Okay. Record is same thing what we have discussed like maintaining records of receipt and issue, updating the stock level as per the movement of the material, basic records of a store are bin card and a stock register. Bin card is placed on the bin in which items are stored. This gives information about the receipt, issue and balance. Stock register gives all the information in the bin card and also the value. Now record will tell you whether you are having surplus inventory or less inventory. Okay. Now this, hello. Hello. Yeah. Now this information. Uh, slide number nine. Okay. Okay. You can some other words, no? some other kind of records, no? sometimes. Bin record and stock register. I will tell it again I forgotten I think <laughs> so in records what will happen is uh, whatever is incoming whatever is going and whatever the invent you are having you need to have this proper information of these records. this information will be fed into your MRP system this information will tell that what is your projected available balance okay this information will tell that what is your plan order release and plan order receipt mm -hmm. based on this only your MRP will allocate material and then MPS can process your orders mm -hmm. right now within mm -hmm. a store how do they keep a records they keep records in two form one is called a bin card and another is called a stock register mm -hmm. now bin card is placed on bin in which items are stored this mm -hmm. gives information about receipt issue and balance so mm -hmm. let's imagine that uh, you are in a FMCG store not a retail store FMCG factory store so you in mm -hmm. one container you will have full of wheat in another container you will have sugar in another container you will have uh, glucose you will have oil and all those things so on top of all container you you will have a receipt which will say that how, what is your receipt how much you have received how much you have issued and what is your net balance mm -hmm. that is called a bin card mm -hmm. then stock registers give all gives all the information in the bin card and also the value mm -hmm. okay correct correct so next is housekeeping maintenance of a speak and a span cleanliness in the store ensuring principle of place for everything and everything in its place is fully implemented good housekeeping ensures satisfactory work practices okay. control taking measures to ensure material plan is being adhered to any changes in consumption pattern or replenishment pattern are closely monitored for corrective action material movement is was to identify non moving material for disposal effective control puts into effect management objectives of no shortage and no excess so you should have a proper control within your system that control will tell that you are not running short of material or you do not have your surplus material 
also it will talk you about what is about your consumption pattern and your replenishment pattern consumption pattern means that the rate at which you are uh, satisfying your customer by issuing the material and replenishment pattern means the rate at which you are receiving your materials from your supplier okay. surplus management we have dis discussed this effective disposal system for unneeded materials to reduce inventory cost and proactive measures to eliminate deterioration and obsolescence absolute items are good in all respect but ha no have no useful role in the company due to changes that have occurred in the course of time now let's take imagine a hypothetical situation about a electronic or a high tech industry so you mm -hmm. you will have different types of transistors capacitors boards and everything now and you manufacture some type of kit now due to a high level of change you have redesigned the kit but the order mm -hmm. which you have placed last time so basically what mm -hmm. is here is your projected available balance for one particular mm -hmm. type of capacitor is too high which you are mm -hmm. not going to consume okay now you are left with a huge quantity of such capacitors which will not have any use in near or in far future okay now that capacitor will take you because you have lot of quantity so you need to uh, concentrate on your their storage safety security everything so it is having a carrying cost mm -hmm. now you want to get rid of this material because you don't have you don't see any value addition from that particular material so what you will do is you will contact some another company who need such material or you will ask your supplier to take back this material give some at a discount rate and all those things so in that sense you need to clear off your space correct uh, why do they need obsolete items they don't need it okay in an apparel industry i have ordered time shirts okay but the design fashion keeps changing so fast i was not able to sell them i was not able to sell all the 10 shirts i only sold around 6 shirts 6 shirts i still left with 4 shirts and i know that no one is going to buy it so what i need to do i need to put a discount 50% sale rather to get a 50% value of the shirt is better than to getting a zero value so you will have a sale and that basis you will get rid of those particular four shirts okay, okay. next is very next is verification stock verification to eliminate gap between information and physical stock in excess some items are maintained as stock items the stock triggers the procurement cycle for such items when a predetermined reorder level is reached hence correct stock position through verification is critical to ensure no shortage and no excess for the item so here what they are talking about is that you should have a real time information about your stock okay. correct because this information will be fed into your mrp mps and you will do lot of planning you will do lot of order promising and everything so okay. in in certain cases what may happen is that in your register you say that 10 quantity is there okay mm -hmm. but when you physically go and find you find that there are only 9 quant units of that particular item okay so where the hell has that one particular item gone okay so you need to change your records that okay there is a loss of one item that you will say and then current number of quantity is 9 not 10 Okay. And then that number will be fed into the system, and based on that, the material requirement planning will work. Okay. Then you have interaction coordination. Yes, you need huge number of coordination, hu huge quantity of coordination, very close mm -hmm. interaction between purchasing, production, quality control, and engineering functions is obviously needed in the discharge of the functions discussed so far. it also becomes necessary to coordinate the flow of material samples and information through a network of departments for performance of stores functions besides every management function being an internal customer interaction is very important 
Stores organization. Store is a function of materials management in an organization. Hence, it is generally found that stores function reports to materials manager. But in some situation, store functions report to production function. So what they are saying is that store is basically about a material management, correct? Mm -hmm. So in certain cases, they report to their mat material manager, okay? Mm -hmm. And in certain cases, they may report to their production manager also. Mm -hmm. Store systems and procedures. Store systems and procedures operate the stores every day. Systems and procedures should undergo continuous review to avoid. Yeah. Yep. Do you have any examples when they report to material manager and when they report to production function? Okay. In the case of a Reliance store, okay, mm -hmm. who is the store manager? He will be a material manager, correct? Okay. But in maybe in the case of any production floor, a material management may be a reports to the production function. So basically, it's the duty of the production system to take care about the material also. There is no separate person to take care about the material or the store. The product people who are involved in the production system, they are only uh, able. They should only take care about the stores. Okay. So in the store systems and procedures, what they say is that systems and procedures should undergo continuous review to avoid redundancy and rigidity. Continuous okay. review in the form of PDCA, plan, okay. do, check and act, okay. should provide the benefit experience of implementation. Okay. okay. Operation okay. of the stores is made up of number of activities involving various functions inside and outside the organization. These activities are tied together by procedures so that transparency comes in the variation due to individual personalities are limited. Okay? okay. Yeah. Receipt system. Stores receive materials from various sources. Some of them yeah. are internal and some are external. Receive system is a specific to the source. When materials arrive from an external source, this system handles the receipt. Mm -hmm. Purchase functions raises a purchase order on the source of the supply. A copy is sent to stores. Store are now advised about the order. Right? Mm -hmm. Types of storage. One, one second. Uh -huh. Purchase function rises it below on the total on the total supply. Is the same thing. That what happened is that when the production people say that we uh, don't have uh, material, so they are going to order a material by open by a purchase order. Okay. The purchase when a purchase order is sent to a supplier, the same purchase mm -hmm. copy of purchase order is given to the store department also. Okay. Based on that only when the supplier gives a delivery chalan, the store department will match with that particular purchase order. Okay. So types of storage. As per the ta as per types of the materials stored, raw material store, okay, <coughs> component store, whip store, fi finished goods stores, semi finished goods stores, tools store, die curve, consumer material store. Die curve? Okay. Tools, raw material means your raw material could be in the form of wheat for FMCG industry, could be form of uh, uh, cold iron or a hot iron in the form of a uh, high tech industry. Uh, components could be like uh, your, your sub assembly thing, Com like mm -hmm. uh, your steering wheel is coming from a different company, your wheel is coming from a different company. So you need to store them in your organization also. Based on that only you will manufacture the system or a car, right? Okay. Then whip, whip store means that when you are, partially you have developed the particular product, 
okay if you have a chassis and on chassis you have made the outer cover okay <coughs> so that becomes vip so you need to take care about the storage of that thing also finished good stores finished good means your car is now ready so you need to store mm -hmm. that car Sem semi finished goods means your car is partially ready okay mm -hmm. tools store die car crib now whatever you are using the components okay you will have a hammer you will have a screwdriver you will have a soldering iron you need to store those machines also correct mm -hmm. yes in such for a printing press uh, you need to ha you will have a die or for a painting industry you will have a die you need to store those things also okay I think die crib means that uh, whatever is the die, the die which will be used, uh, let's say for a printing. What happens is where in a printing you will have a uh, uh, a design, correct? Uh. That design will be made on a die. Same thing, and then die like a rubber stamp, okay? So that die, uh, you need to have like uh, ink for that and all those things. That's what they're trying to say here. Mm -hmm. Then consumable materials store means that in a manufacturing industry, if you're working on a lathe, okay, so you need to mm -hmm. oil your machine. So you need to have a lubricant oil. You need to have a cotton wool. What happens is that if excess oil is there, then oil may spread on the material. Okay, so for wiping it out, you need to have a cotton wool. Mm. So that is what they are talking about: consumable materials store. So or cotton is an example. Yeah, the cotton wool could be an lubricant. example. Yeah, lubricant could be an example for that manufacturing industry. In the then uh, you need to have like a LPG store. Like if you have a restaurant. For a restaurant, you need to have a LPG all the time. Correct. Mm -hmm. So you need to have your LPG in a store. For a petrochemical industry or for a textile industry, you will have chemicals. You will have hazardous materials like uh, f uh, for a nuclear power plant. You will have uranium and all those things. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you will you need to store also refrigerated materials like nitrogen uh, and other materials. So, as per the function of the storage, types of storage are there will be a receiving store, correct? Mm -hmm. Then a central store, mm -hmm. then a general store, and sub stores. Mm -hmm. Storage system, physical system. Physical storage of material is very important from the point of view mm -hmm. of identification retrieval and issue mm -hmm. in stores management two types of records are fundamental one is called bin card or a stock card mm -hmm. yeah uh, stock card okay. another is stocks ledger stock mm -hmm. card or bin card bin card fixed on the bins showing the quantity received issued and balances copy of these records is maintained for reference by the stores in charge this record also triggers purchase activity when rol of an item is reached not the order reorder level and stock ledger contains value in addition to the physical stock which is also shown on the bin card value in terms of money okay issue system from the stores material is issued for internal consumption and sometimes issued to outside parties pro processing mm -hmm. issues to consuming department materials issued to consuming departments against the material requisition slip which is duly mm -hmm. authorized and made with reference to a work order for production right mm -hmm. quantity mm -hmm. needed for production is mentioned in work order and stores employees are not authorized to issue excess quantity Okay hence an automatic control is exercised on consumption mm -hmm. the work order mentioned above is raised based on the bills of material for production okay rigid control on issue to processors outside 
Okay. Stores accounting and verification systems. Purpose of stores accounting is to know cost of materials consumed in production. Cogs. Mm -hmm. No, not, sorry, not cogs. Cost of materials uh, produced in consumption. Sorry, cost of materials consumed in production. Mm -hmm. Levels of wastage is produced, and value of mm -hmm. material lying in the stock. Okay. For asserting the above following factors are taking into account your material price, what are the mm -hmm. costs, right? So you will mm -hmm. have a material price, you will have the transport price, you will have insurance, duties, tax, packaging charges, etc. So all these things will tell you what is the cost of the material. Okay. Okay. Then there are couple of systems like FIFO, LIFO. FIFO says first in first out. When the material is issued, it is assumed that the one which came first is going out. Hence the rate mm -hmm. pertaining to the first in is applied. To the stock okay. latest price is applied. I'll come. I'll come. When there are several price changes, this system becomes complex. FIFO says that Let's say that we are receiving uh, 10 tons of wheat every week, okay? So any particular week when there is a need, what we will do is that whatever the week which has arrived in the earliest or earlier week, that wheat will be given to the production mm -hmm. system, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, when you are giving it to the production system, what is the cost of the wheat? Okay. So in that scenario you are going to take the latest price mm -hmm. to find out the price of the wheat I thought uh, for the one party we will apply the rate pertaining to the first week the new stock will apply the latest price is it like that? to the stock latest price is applied they really can train the pertaining to the first in is applied correct correct hence the rate pertaining to the first in is applied so whatever uh, we have received the material at whatever the cost is, that will that be is. applied okay the to the stock, stock means whatever is left over right uh. so okay correct yes you are correct so let's say I'm standing in week 3 and I need to consume 10 kg of wheat so whatever I am going to get material if I am going to get from week 1 then that price should be applied for rest the latest price should be applied mm -hmm. for a new stock you apply the latest price yeah like for week 3 you will apply the latest price but or for rest of them you will apply the latest price but for the initial week you will apply the price at which you have receive the material okay. last in first out at the time of issue when the material is issued latest entrant is assumed to be going out hence latest price is applied to the issue and receive price is applied to the stock so what it says is that whatever the material which we have received in a, which is latest correct huh? that material only we are going to issue it Okay. okay now we the latest will have the latest price okay. let's say that in week 3 I have received the material in week 1 and week 2 so in week 3 when I am going to issue I will issue my week 2 material okay, okay. so if we, so whatever the price I am going to consider is would be the price of week 2 right okay. and whatever we have like from week 1 it will have week 1 price Okay. It means that we have to apply the price at which we purchase it. Yes. So, okay. correct. That is what is the meaning. General guidelines for closing stock. Apply market price or receipt price. Is again now. Okay. Is it fine now? Yes. General guidelines for closing stock. Apply market price or receipt price, whichever is lower. Make accounting provision for obsolescence and or deterioration. 
so it's a guideline for closing a stock closing a stock means that let's say a week 1 you have got the stock so you have will have some zero stock then in that week you have consumed it okay then week 1 when it is ending and before the starting of week 2 you will calculate that how much inventory is left out in your store room okay that point of time if you want to calculate the value of the um material so you need to consider that whatever is the value of the material in that price at which you have bought okay so let's say the price you have bought at 10 rupees Okay. Now at the end of the week one, the price has gone to nine rupees. Okay. So what is the value of your stock? Nine rupees, correct? Nine. Zero. Yes. On the uh, on the same way, you have bought the stock at ten rupees, okay. but the current price has gone to twelve rupees. Okay. So what price is at what price are you going to use it? Ten rupees only, okay. right? Because in the financial system we do. we act from a conservative perspectiveness okay. so stock verification systems here we are going to see all types of discrepancies like discrepancies invariably occur between physical stock and the books in spite of good store keeping hence the okay. system is needed to locate this gap and apply correction Okay. Purpose of stock verification is to reconcile stock figures with books, to identify okay. areas for tighter control, to keep a check on pilferage and fraud and practices, to back up okay. balance sheet stock figures. So in verification, okay. what happens is that whatever the quantity you have in a phys at a physical level and the quantity you have at your informational level, there may be a gap. hello hello yeah so there may be a gap up for the quantity which is present in your books and the quantity which is physically present so we need to minimize this gap means we need to have a real time information in your book okay okay and then for stock verification the purpose is to we should have need to know what how much investment we are having in terms of material in our book and um, for, uh, if there is a pilferage or fraud and practices happening we need to keep a check what is the balance sheet and all those things mm -hmm. so a store is a place where we keep material who mm -hmm. satisfies the demand of an internal customer if the store is within the organization or an external mm -hmm. customer if it is like a, a retail outlet store in a store we keep uh, materials uh which will mm -hmm. have a incoming operation and outgoing uh we need to have a proper vigilance in a store to cater to check to have a check on pilferages uh, fraud on fraud and practices and uh, we need to keep a proper stock verification we should have a proper or a real time information of the quantity of stock in a physical form in our books so that is the information that we need about a store